I mean, I would have died years and years ago if it wasn't for painting. Painting, is, it's, it's all I do. And it's not, it's not, it's, it's not my choice, it's a necessity. And uh, I feel that uh, art is, is something that, um, in the end, does really save mankind. I believe so. If there is, I mean, it, it's my definition of God, I think. Hello, my name is Rakeep Shaw, and this is how art changed me. About two and a half years ago, my, I mean, I mean, my, my complete, my whole world, uh, in a way, collapsed, and I realized that every single thing that happened in my life was, in a way, preordained, and I felt like a puppet because whatever happened in my life had to happen for these paintings to exist the way they are existing. Certain things have happened in my life that that at the end of the day, they've left me with, with absolutely nothing to do but paint these damn things. Because 25 years of doing nothing but engaging with these pieces of wood is quite something. These paintings just come to me. I, I just, I just, you know, uh, I never have that problem of, oh, what do I do next? Or where do I get inspiration from? I was born in Calcutta and I grew up in Kashmir. And uh, I think for the first, um, I would say 16 years of my life, I was uh, living in Kashmir. It was uh, a very beautiful life. It was, you know, Kashmir is an incredibly beautiful place with the mountains and the wonderful gardens. So it was uh, a perfect uh, uh, idyllic life that uh, I thought that, you know, I would, I would just continue being there. But then in 1988, um, the Great Troubles started and there was a civil war. That is when uh, my family decided that uh, it was a good idea to leave. I came to England in 1993, was my first time. And I did not really know that I was going to be an artist or a painter, you know, I had no idea. You know, my family, they were merchants and I was destined to be one of them and work in the family business like everyone else did. And then I went to the National Gallery in London and uh, I saw the Holbein paintings, I saw the ambassadors to be precise, as a painting of merchants. And I realized that uh, I would want to be, I would not want to be the merchant, I would be the one who paints them. It would be fair to say that it was that one painting that, that uh, changed my mind and, and that convinced me that uh, I would be a painter one day. In 1998, I went to art college. I had absolutely no money whatsoever and I did not have a place to live. I was squatting uh, in uh, this place called Hackney Wick, which is quite gentrified now. But back then, uh, it was uh, quite a terrible place. It was uh, very, very rough. It was as rough as uh, you know, certain parts of London could get. And uh, I was squatting on top of a, a peanut factory called Percy Dalton's Peanut Factory. And I remember that it had, uh, there was no heating, there was no hot water and that is how I went through my um, four years of degree and, and uh, one more year of, of uh, making the work before I was picked up by a gallery. And I tell you, it was, it was, it was, it was fun and I had, I had a great time. But there are certain paintings that I made in that period. For example, there was the, the Garden of Earthly Delight series. And when I look at any painting from that series, I feel really cold because it was really, really cold. It was very, very cold. <laughs> and then, of course, things happened and then um, one of my paintings came up uh, into auction and it sold for a fairly large price and then the depression started. Then, then I went into deep depression for about 15 years. I completely withdrew and, and I started making, I deliberately started making paintings that were very ugly. That's why that series that I made during that time was called um, Absence of God. A very, very violent series and of course I was not well, it was, it was, I was in an absolute mess. And then after that uh, uh, was the Paradise Lost series, which again um, was about a lot about exile and, and, and finding myself uh, uh, very, very alone in, in, in a place where um, the only um, thing that kept me going on was my belief in, in, in the paintings. So that was the time that the paintings became, started becoming even more autobiographical. When I was growing up in Kashmir, it was, um, I was exposed to uh, a lot of uh, Sufi uh, uh, poetry. And the first thing that, you, uh, that stayed with me was this thing of, uh, if you really want um, to achieve anything in life, you have to go inside and, and you'll find everything in there. There is something that we put in the paintings without knowing, be it suffering, be it angst, be it whatever it is, and it gets stuck in the paintings. You know, it, it's, it, 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 and we as humans, 
it doesn't matter whether we understand art or we don't, we can feel that something. And, and, and I've seen that increasingly. These paintings from, you know, since uh, quite some time, I feel that, uh, I always have felt that, that these are not really things that, that uh, are relevant to me in terms of, uh, or I'm making them for myself. Increasingly, I believe that uh, these are for um, generations to follow. And, and that's why they do record uh, the, the time and, and the, our day and age. And, and uh, I think the human condition, which at the end of the day is universal.